Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to take your images in Adobe Photoshop and make them look like you're looking through a window with fog or condensation on it. And I'm going to go ahead and just get started. I've actually done a tutorial like this in the past but I find that uh, these techniques are a little bit easier and they go a little bit quicker so here we go. Um, uh, the first thing that you want to do is take your background layer, your image, and you want to make a copy of it. You can press Control J on your keyboard to do that, or you can take your uh, background layer and drag it into your new layer button down there. The next thing that I uh, want you to do is in that layers palette, uh, there's a tab called channels. Click on that. And if this palette's not up, go up to a window, down to layers, and click on that, and it'll pop up. So anyway, click on your channels tab. And then go ahead and go down to the, the new channel button. It's in the same place as the new layer button. And uh, a new channel will be uh, created, and it, it's called Alpha 1. The next thing to do is you go up to Filter, down to Texture, and down to Grain. Um, you can use the settings that I have set up here. I have this first drop down set to Grain, my intensity set to 100, and the contrast I have set to 25. You can play around with the contrast a little bit. It, uh, it will affect the final outcome of, of this effect. But you need to set the grain type drop down at the bottom to vertical in order to get the right type of effect. Um, and then click, go ahead and click OK. OK, so this is kind of what it gives you now. Uh, the next thing that I want you to do is go up to uh, Filter, down to Artistic and then select smudge stick. Go ahead and set uh, set these settings like I have them as well. I have um, at the top here smudge stick because that's the effect that we want. With the stroke length set to zero, the highlight area set to 10, and the intensity set to 10. Uh, if you want to, you can play around with this highlight area, maybe bump it up to 20 or so. And I'll, I'll go ahead and just do that. And I'll press OK. All right. And you can kind of see what that does. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is go up to Filter, down to Blur, and then add a Gaussian Blur. And I want to do that uh, a one pixel radius at the, at the bottom there, and then click OK. Go up to Filter, once again, down to Blur, and then do Motion Blur. And set the angle to 90, the distance to 7 pixels, and then click OK. And you can play around with all these settings as you're, as you're doing this, and you can redo it and uh, change them and do whatever you want to get the, the effect that you need. The next thing to do is go up to Image, down to Adjustments, and down to Levels, or you could press Control l on your keyboard. I know from uh, practicing this that I want this bottom level to be set to about 40, and this top uh, white level to be set to around 100. Uh, you can see that... that uh, what that does, and you can play around with these as well. See what they what the changes do. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I know from practicing that uh, some of these lines are a little bit small uh, in my final in my final outcome. So what I want to do is I'm going to shrink down my page, and I'm going to press Control and the minus sign to shrink down my canvas. There. You can also um, grab your zoom tool from your toolbar and press alt and um, kind of drag it out and that will uh, shrink your, your your artboard as well. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to press control T or you could go up to edit down to free transform and I just want to drag this one side out to kind of make those lines a little bit larger and then I can either double click on it or select my arrow button and it'll ask me if I want to apply the changes and I'll click apply and I can go ahead and zoom back in on it, press Control-0, or you can do Control and then the plus sign, or you can use your zoom in your toolbar to zoom back in on it. Next thing that I want to do is hold down Control on my keyboard and click on that Alpha 1 channel that we created earlier. And what that's going to do is make a selection of this area that we've just expanded and created here. Now, in your Layers palette and your Channels palette, go up to the tab at the top and click back on your Layers and click on your layer one copy that you made. And you can see that the selection moves over there. Now what you should do is go up to Image, down to Adjustments, and go to Brightness and Contrast. Set the contrast to 20 pixels, and uh, click OK. Then go up to Select, down to Inverse, and click on that, or you could press Shift-Control-I. 
and then go back up to image at the top, back down to adjustments, and back to brightness and contrast. And so now that we have the inverse selected, we're going to set that to a negative 30 contrast and leave the brightness at zero and click OK. The next thing you want to do is go up to filter, down to blur, and then gauche and blur. Uh, the higher the radius you set this, the more of the effect you're going to get. And I'm going to set mine to about 15 pixels because I know that that's about what I want for this image. And you can kind of play around with that. This is really one of the most important steps, if not the most important. So go ahead and play around with that and then click OK. And you can press uh, Control D to deselect or you can click on your marquee tool and click off to the side somewhere. And you can see what you have. And um, I'm not sure if you can see this very well, but you have a pretty nice effect. Uh, it, there's some blurring and then there's some clear areas. And this blur kind of, the, co the colors kind of come up off into the blur. Uh, into the blurred areas a little bit. It makes it really look like you're looking through a window or uh, uh, like a foggy window or a window with condensation on it. And that's it. You're done. So I hope you learned something from this tutorial. Uh, please watch my other videos on YouTube. And if you liked this one, please click the like button and uh, follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook. And thanks for watching. Also, I would like to add that I, I got this video from a uh, a written tutorial online and I'm going to provide a link in the description area of this video um, to that site so you can also follow these on, on that website in their written directions and I'd like to thank them for for posting this it's a really quite nice tutorial